Hey guys, Adrian here, Kid Guru for the Digital Dojos, and uh, today I want to do a video on why I think you should upgrade to the iPhone 5 and why you should not upgrade. So we're kind of taking a, a standpoint from both ways um, to kind of give an opinion for both users, you know, for those who want to upgrade and for those who are just kind of, you know, deciding whether or not people leaning on the fence, all of that. Um, this will be going up on digitaldojos.com with accompanied blog post by myself uh, explaining more about the reasons, etc. And I hope you guys can hear the background noise. There's a super typhoon going on right now, so hopefully that doesn't get in the way of the video. First off, let me start off by saying I did my coverage. I watched a lot of people's opinion pieces on the iPhone 5. Um, and I decided that, hey, I, I had the opportunity here in Japan to get on the list for SoftBank, my carrier, our early list, um, to order the iPhone 5 to be on the pre-order list for the iPhone 5. That's not even out yet, technically, but I know somebody who works at SoftBank, so um, I decide, hey, why not go for it if I can get it early? Um, so um, I'm thinking about getting the 16 gig model. Nothing is set in stone yet. I'm just on the list, so we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I wanted to talk off first starting the video of about the technology, the new technology in the iPhone 5, and let's run it down real quick. So it is faster, you know, that's just every upgrade, every incremental upgrade. And I, I like to say that the iPhone 5, a lot of people say, um, a lot of tech pundits out there are saying it's it's evolutionary, not revolutionary. And I think that's a very good way to put it because it's an incremental upgrade. It's not necessarily a 3GS to a 4. It's a 3G to 3GS. It's a 4 to 4S. It's that type of upgrade. It's incremental. Uh, it's faster, of course. You know, it's like I said, it's faster. It has a six processor. They say it's twice as fast. New, you know, GPU performance and just overall performance engineering standpoint. It's completely re-engineered. It's completely remodeled from the way it's cut to the way the the aluminum is unibody now in the back on, t on the top and bottom part being the glass to send out signals, etc. The inside has been, you know, just detrimentally made for space for battery for the new ports on the bottom with the new nine pin lightning dot connector, which is something that a lot of people are saying that Apple is kind of just doing to switch up the standard. It's something they had to do to re-engineer the phone to really fit in all that stuff. If you've never um, seen the the inside of an iPhone, like I said, I repaired you. I used to repair these for a living. Or you know, for a, a job, I should say, a local business, um, repair iPhones and iPods, and the dock connector does take up a substantial amount of space. And the only way they could have fit all this stuff is by taking that and re-engineering or re-innovating a new dock connector. Um, so it's gonna have iOS 6, and it's gonna have, like I said, new technology. It's gonna have LTE. It's gonna have that Lightning connector. It's gonna have some improved uh, hardware specs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so with that, let's go into the reasons why I think you should upgrade to the iPhone 5 under certain cir circumstances. Wide upgrade. It is if you are coming from old hardware. If you're coming from anything 3GS and below, it's a surefire upgrade. I think if you're on the four, it's kind of on the fence whether or not you should upgrade. It's kind of like a 50/50 depending on what you need. If you need, you know, something that's super fast and you know the latest, then yeah, obviously go with the five. If you just, you know, you know, speed doesn't really matter to you because most people won't really see the difference between A5 and A6, just regular consumers. Um, so I think the $99 upgrade to the 4S will do you just fine. Um, but if you want, you know, if you're coming from old hardware, like I said, the iPhone 5 is offering the A6, it's offering LTE, it's offering a lot of cool new technology out there. Um, if you just want to get a feel for it, because obviously it's, it's re-engineered. It's, it's, you know, or I'll talk about this in a second, but if you're due for an upgrade also, if your contract has expired and you're looking to get a new phone, you might as well, you know, if you're looking to get with the latest an iPhone 5 if you want to be an early adopter. Um, Talking about the re-engineering part, like I said uh, earlier, it is it is faster. Obviously, that's just a definite. Re-engineered wise, if you have a 4S, basically the way the iPhone 5 is, if you think of it, is if you have this back plate right here, and if you if you can if you know how to remove it, that's awesome. Because if you remove it, or if you just imagine it sliced off, that's the exact dimensions about of the iPhone 5. That's about how um, how thin it'll be, not necessarily how light it'll be. Because the iPhone 5, a lot of people are saying it feels, you know amazingly light it's one of those hands-on thing that you really need to experience if if you are for phones that are light and just you know up to date in technology the iphone 5 is obviously your way to go it's faster it's re-engineered it has a lot of cool new stuff in it uh so those are my reasons i think if you want to upgrade or the the reasons or situations you should upgrade now let me talk to you why you shouldn't or why you should not upgrade if you're thinking about it um the 4S is still great. I think a lot of people are touting the 4S, but my 4S is awesome. It's the speeds, the way it performs, you know, um, it's awesome. Hardware-wise, if people take the specs of the camera for the 4S and the 5, they're hardware about the same. They're, they're just about the same in terms of quality, in terms of 
uh, 1080p video. The only thing the other, the five kind of has on the up and up is the, the new lens. It has that new sapphire lens. It has the ability to take photos while shooting video. It has face detection and HD video. Other than that, the 4S and 4, 5 will shoot relatively same video. The 5 does shoot better in low light. But other than that, again, look on the Apple's website. The comparison hardware is literally, you know, uh, same for same on each model. Um, a lot of features also a lot of people are like talking about and really wanting are software based. It's I iOS 6. iOS 6 is coming out to the 4S. It's coming out to the 4. So you're going to get a cool features like maps and all that. While necessarily in the 4 you won't get stuff like turn by turn directions I think. You're still going to get a lot of cool stuff on the 4S with iOS 6. So maybe you should wait out, test iOS 6, see if you really like it and if everything meets your needs. And you may not really need to upgrade to the 5. I put an asterisk next to this next one. That's jailbreaking. I've had that whole five icon dock or rose for a, quite a while on my jailbroken device. I've had, you know, my, my phone runs faster with the tweaks on the jailbreak. It runs solid still, and I've had this for nearly a year now, I think. Um, everything still runs fine. It runs fast. It runs smooth. I haven't any slowdowns, haven't had any issues in terms of where, hey, this is loading really slow. And that's my problem. I think a lot of people are saying, you know, this is twice as fast. And there's a point where, like, the 4S is really fast, you know. Uh, I don't know much if there was a difference I saw between the 4 and 4S. I mean, there was a difference, noticeable, but um, there's a point, I think, where things are too fast that, you know, like, even if this web page opens, like, two seconds faster on the 5 than the 4S, you know, what is two seconds to somebody? You know, uh, applications, I can see, yeah, gaming performance, that can be a bigger thing, but, again, the 4S is still a solid, solid device. It's still a solid hardware. Um, so I, I don't necessarily think all the hype for how fast it is is a reason on on your own to spend out the extra cash and upgrade. And lastly, wait it out. You know, some people really just need to wait it out. You don't need to be an early adopter. If there is going to be a 5S, there's going to be a 5S, then you can wait out for that. Um, and, you know, if you really ne necessarily need those features, you don't really need the 720p FaceTime, you don't necessarily need the 4-inch screen, then it's up to you. You know, you don't really need to upgrade. It's just... I think, again, I think, again, I'm saying it's incremental, but the phone's still going to sell great. The phone is still a great device. I'm not taking it away any any points away from it engineering-wise because it is a great designed phone. Um, there is just some issues I have with it, but I will still be upgrading. Like I said, I, I mean, further down the road, whether it's early or later, I will be upgrading. Um, the 4S, though, again, it's still a solid device. I think if you're on the 4S, you don't necessarily need to upgrade. Everything beyond that is a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more leaning on the side of upgrading. So I hope you guys can take my, uh, you know, opinions. I hope it helps you out in whatever way possible. Again, head over to digitaldojos.com uh, for more videos, more content. Thanks a lot for watching.